Hey, it's Mike Thompson, and welcome to Exposition. And uh, I also have other people here in the studio with me. I'm doing, again, the double duty behind the scenes. But this edition, we have Blake Childers, a, uh, an artist who does, I don't know if you say portraits of uh, characters and different things that you see in popular culture. So uh, here's Valerie and Blake. Hello. Hello. Good to see you today again. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, we're so glad to have you. Blake is um, at the Artisan Shops Gallery. For, he has been for the last uh, month and a half or two. Two months. And um, his work is amazing. We want him to teach at the studio because he is a self-taught artist and um, has drawn his whole life. And um, tell us that when that all started and what you were interested in and how did, how did that all start with you? Well, it all started back whenever I was younger. I always had a interest in drawing. Uh, I remember my dad, he would uh, draw like a horse on a piece of paper and it would blow my mind because to me it was like the realest horse I've ever See? seen. Yeah, oh, there was some work. <laughs> no, the realest horse. Oh, I've the ever realist. Seen. So he's an artist too. N not really, but he would just draw something for me. So then I would just take it to my room and then try to copy it. And then as I got older, you know, uh, Pokemon was a pretty big deal to me. So I would. Uh, that was huge. I would uh, draw Pokemon, and my parents were pretty supportive of it. They would uh, give me some like how to draw books, and uh, I would just. I would look at them, but I wasn't really learning anything from them because I didn't know how to even draw, uh, you know, I mean anything that they were trying to teach me. Yeah. So uh, as I got older, uh, I didn't. I just played a lot of sports and showed horses and stuff like that. And then once I got into high school, um, I started getting an interest into uh, graffiti, and I would see graffiti art on the side of a uh, train. Uh, Oh, train cars I love them. and a lot of them was really good so uh, you know Google was my best friend back then so I would Google images and I would try to just draw what I was seeing like just try to copy not for to like sell or anything but mm -hmm. just for my own satisfaction right. trying to learn someone else's style so um, I would do that and uh, you know as I got out of college I wasn't really drawing I didn't have no um, thought really in art my parents always told me to you know get a good job with retirement and good pay and so on and so forth right and um, that's ultimately where I ended up going anyways is ended up being a mechanic and uh, I just one day just started drawing again just like I always did whenever Thank I was goodness. bored and uh, about three years ago um, was when I really started drawing daily and uh, I started experimenting with uh, markers like Copic markers and then I would move to uh, watercolor and like uh, fluid acrylics and uh, I was looking at like a lot of tattoo art on Instagram and I was learning their styles and I was watching YouTube videos on how to do uh, like flash sheets and stuff like that because I was interested in tattoos and I thought maybe that would be cool to try to get an apprenticeship somewhere oh. but me having the job that I had wouldn't necessarily allow that. Right. So uh, one day I'd seen a video on this uh, guy who actually did flash sheets and he was drawing with charcoal too so I thought that would be really cool. So one day I went to the store and picked up a uh, charcoal pencils and oil paint. I don't know where that came from, but I spent a <laughs> lot of money on my oil paint. And uh, first time I sat down, I tried to draw 
with my charcoal pencils and I was like, this is garbage. So I'm just gonna put it in the closet. And I did the same thing with the oil paints. I tried it and I was like, I don't like it. So um, they stayed in my closet for about a year. And I was just still doing watercolor here and there and just working my job and just drawing when I felt like it. And about a year and a half ago, I picked up the charcoal pencil again and something clicked I just learned how to manipulate the charcoal that I wanted or how I wanted the charcoal to work and it started working for me and then I just had this epiphany one day about drawing uh, things not as how I thought they looked but as they really were and yeah. then my drawings just progressed and I just started just doing portraits because they were always really hard not very many people do portraits and they it's get true. the likeness of someone or something Right. can be almost impossible for some people, so they tend to lean towards like landscapes for still lifes and stuff like that. But right. I wanted to be good at portraits, so I pursued that. That's where it went. Well, boy, did it go there because his work is amazing. We have just maybe three more weeks at the gallery. If you're <coughs> local, please come and check out. Here's. Is this the this first is a family drawing? member, right? Yes, yeah, a family member. <laughs> I thought that was me. Darn it. It can be whoever you want to be. <laughs> no, this is this is Reagan. Reagan from The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one of my favorite drawings. Not because, I don't want to say it's because it's cool or whatever. Just So we style, won't have to worry about stylistically, you. Stylistically, <laughs> I think it was my best produced work because it had everything that I was wanting to do. You think hair's the the hardest thing to do or is it the proportions or the skin? Uh, the proportions or? definitely are the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Hair is not too, uh, not difficult at all. You just start with um, a dark and then you just use your eraser and um, you just start putting in your highlights and just manipulating the values of the hair and then eventually it just shapes itself. That's amazing. It's just, uh, and of course, I don't know very many people who don't like Harry Potter. Yes. Uh, Voldemort's, of course, one of my favorites. I always tend to like the bad guys or villains <laughs> of yeah. movies or whatever. They're so intriguing. You know, they always have the features that are just so intriguing. Uh, Picasso. Um, I went through a spell where I was watching a lot of YouTube videos about uh, famous artists like Van Gogh and Picasso and Monet and like uh, Gauguin and so on and so That's forth. That's so and fantastic. I really like their backstories and where they came from and it just sparked an interest in me to try to do portraits of them too as like a dedication to them as like you know this is th this is someone who um, like that I their work that I like, and they inspire me to keep doing what I do. Yes. Yeah, I wondered how you got from Reagan to Picasso. <laughs> it's just completely, <laughs> just whatever I like at the moment. Like, I don't really st stick to the same thing. I know a lot of artists are kind of, uh, they only do one kind of certain thing, which mm -hmm. I guess my portraits are a certain thing, but mm -hmm. it, it varies. That's just the way I am. People who know me, like, I can be way over here in left field and be doing the total opposite. Like my right. taste, my taste in music is like that too. Yeah, that's so great. So you like uh, the Beatles and Lennon? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're not my favorite, but I definitely do respect the Beatles and uh, their story and where they came from and just their impact on society. And there's a, an artist that I follow on Instagram. His name's Rick Young. And he's an amazing charcoal artist, and he always draws pictures of John Lennon. Oh. And uh, I just thought, you know, maybe I would just want to try my own uh, hand at that and see what I could do, and that's what came of it. That's, that's fantastic. That's my husband good. bought that piece, by the way. Hmm. Mm-hmm, yep. And this is uh, Bride of Frankenstein. You had to make prints of it. Now you're, you're, you're doing, like, limited prints of some pieces. Yeah, limited prints of some pieces and uh, Frankenstein as well. And um, I've actually watched that movie, me and my wife did, and I, drew, I had fantastic. drawn a Frankenstein at first, and then I thought, you know, you can't just draw Frankenstein without having his bride. That's right, so. that's right. 
Was that from that movie, Bride of Frankenstein? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was part of this movie. Yes. Uh, right? No, this no? is actually a different movie. Oh. It's the uh, Young Frankenstein is what yeah. movie that's from. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm that's Igor. Igor. With, with Igor. Gene Wilder. Yep. Yes. I actually uh, drew Gene Wilder for a friend of mine. Wow. And uh, it's on my Instagram if anyone wants to see it. But Of um, course they do. But well, yeah, I drew him as well because, you know, if you're going to draw Gene Wilder, you need to draw a sidekick too. Yes. Is that Marty Feldman? I Wait. think so. Marty Feldman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're old, so yeah. we're getting. <laughs> we sort of remember names. The mind goes. So what's your Instagram? Uh, Blake Childers Art. Blake Childers Art. Okay. Do you have a website or a Facebook page of your art specifically? I have a Facebook page that I just recently started. It's Blake Childers Art as well. Okay. So and it's connected to where anything I post on Instagram, and it just goes on Facebook or vice versa. Okay. But I don't have a website, no, not currently. Do you have other contact information if somebody sees this show and they want to contact you, but they don't say do? Um, whatever those social medias are, would you um, have either a phone number or an email or um, some, some other way of contacting you? Yeah, I have uh, an email that I don't have on my uh, Instagram or Facebook page, but I have an email that I could use. That I probably need to put on my pages so people can contact me. In the meantime, we could facilitate just, any just contact? Just message me on Facebook or Instagram. Okay, that sounds great. And if not, if someone's like, you know, they watch TV but they don't have a computer, then could they contact us and then we contact you? Yeah. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Great. And and you can you can still, you know, see Blake's work at um, the Artisan Shop and Studio and Gallery <laughs> for a few more weeks. So would you do a commission piece? You know, I want you to draw a picture of this or that. Are you into that? Yeah, I'd, uh, I do some commissions, and I've done some commissions for people just like that uh, Gene Wilder. I did that with uh, a buddy of mine. He's also an artist as well, and we just ended up just trading work. So I guess it's not really a commission, but we traded artwork for yes. each other for it. And I'm working on a commission piece right now for a co-worker of mine of a uh, one of his bulls. And um, I drew a bulldog. Lucy for a co-worker of mine as well that I had in your show. Yes. And he actually uh, purchased it, so that's really cool. And there's Lucy right there. Yes, and also we have um, a young lady and her brother that are going to commission you to do their bulldog. Oh, really? Um, yes, but I won't say names just in case they're watching. <laughs> But well, you've you've got some commissions coming, I'm sure. I hope when so. Keep me busy. Yes, when people see, and you're thinking about possibly teaching yep. what you create. So hopefully, you'll be offering some classes soon in drawing at the artisan shop and studio. Um, but we'll let that kind of swirl and yep. see what you want to come up with, but we're hoping to have Blake as one of our instructors. That would be amazing. And I know a lot of people would be very interested because that's like one of the basics, yeah. you know, when you get into art, if you're just learning, you know, it's nice to learn how to draw. And like I told you earlier, it's a lot of people are like, I don't know how to shade. I don't know how to get depth, kind of a, a 3D perception. Um, and things like that. So you would learn, you would learn all that with Blake's classes. Yeah, you gotta have good basic uh, fundamental drawing skills, especially if you wanna start painting or use any other sort of uh, medium and so on. And uh, I'd like to be able to uh, sit down and with a few people and try to show them how my mind works and my thought process and how I've uh, learned over just my short three years of just teaching myself with Instagram and YouTube how to draw. I mean, I'm not exactly where I want to be yet, but hopefully one day I can get there. Well, I, th I think as artists, you know, we're all growing and learning always. I mean, there's 
there's no end to it. You know, you, you see um, the masters and you will see the progression of what they started with, what their, you know, um, the middle of their, their time in art and then what they ended up with before they're gone. And it's just, it's a progression and a process and you're always evolving, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You see a lot of uh, master painters like uh, Picasso himself or like Van Gogh and their earlier works were very classical styled, mm -hmm. what you would expect to see in a museum. But um, as they progressed through their career, they kind of went away from the, I guess, the standard teaching and the, the normal, and which is a good thing because if it wasn't for people breaking the rules, we wouldn't have what we have today. Right. And like, they would draw these real realistic portraits and these thought out paintings and then. Yeah, Picasso didn't start doing his abstract stuff right off. No, it was You kind of kind of learn the rules first right. before you break the rules. Right. I like that. And that's what I want some people to see whenever I do oil paintings is, like I want them to see that painting to me is more enjoyable and I don't want to be so tight with what I'm doing. Like right. I could care less how realistic my painting looks because I just like slapping paint yeah. all over the canvas and just having fun with the colors. Whereas I'm drawing with charcoal or pencil or whatever, um, I'm a lot more tight and more focused on uh, the piece that I'm working on so I can get its likeness and its proportions and stuff right. right. How, how often do you paint or draw or whatever? It's, it's a good outlet because, I don't know, you have a really glamorous job. Yeah, my job's... Your Glamorous vocation. Sure. It's <laughs> good to have your advocation. Yes, my uh, drawing is definitely uh, a release for me, for sure. Yeah. It's it, a good therapy. Yeah. You're a mechanic. Yeah. And um, just like Van Gogh, he's definitely one of my favorite artists, for sure. You know, he's uh, one of his quotes was, he got lost, lost his mind in the process of making his own work. And I can see that in a way where it almost becomes like, uh, I don't know, like meditation almost. Like you can just get lost into what you're doing and just everything, just time goes by really fast. And yes. Just get lost into your work. You can, you absolutely can. I felt like. Takes you into another place over the rainbow, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yes, well, look at the monitor. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, he has a he has a last set of the Wizard of Oz. Where's the originals? Um, a coworker of mine actually owns them. Okay. Well, I am sorry to say, but I am purchasing the very last set of his prints, his limited prints, and I'm going to get all four of these and frame them and be very proud to to display them in our home. So I guess you got a Dorothy. You don't have munchkins or anything, right? No, no munchkins. I got Dorothy, and um, I guess I forgot to put her on the uh, the USB as well. But she's you need the Wicked Witch of the West, or East I thought or about whatever. doing her, but oh, I never got around to it. Maybe so another maybe set. I might just do that. <gasps> yes, another set of like the Wizard, mm -hmm. and it's I mean he's just a the flying monkeys. Yeah, the flying the monkeys flying for monkeys. sure. Flying monkeys. <laughs> And Toto. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people told me to do uh, Dorothy and Toto together, and I thought about it, but I like to keep my uh, my drawings pretty simple. Yes. I try not to do too much and have a whole lot going on. Like I just want people to, to get the point. To zero in on. Like the they see it as it is. There's no like really meaning behind it. Yeah. I I just love. Them. I can't wait to get them and frame them and put them up. But you were saying, I want to go back to when you were talking about painting, how you kind of just let go and mm -hmm. you're not real. But your paintings at the gallery, at our gallery, mm -hmm. are very meticulous, I think. I think like the one with the, who's no, that? Ballot. The nun. Ballot. Yes. And things like that are just like, they're very, yeah, very. Uh, focused. Even though it doesn't look like it's much, it's just two yellow dots really for the eyes, but that uh, to me is very captivating. I remember working on that piece and having it in my uh, 
my little art space that I have and if I would turn the lights off and you could still see the lot the eyes just of the painting just kind of almost glowing it's a little weird sounding but a little bit creepy a little creepy but yes. I just want people to just feel like they're getting stared at yes you want mm -hmm. them creeped out yeah that's so cool when you can like really get an emotional response yeah. from your paintings and the other one it look I mean the flesh or so I don't know what it is but it looks like someone scooped out flesh from their face and there the other one I can't yeah, I know remember. what you're talking about I think I uh, titled it yellow teeth just because it's yes. pretty nasty yes they are <laughs> But that doesn't look like you just slap paint on either. That yeah. looks very, it really looks like you could just put your hand, finger in the, you don't, wouldn't want to, mm -hmm. but it looks like you just put your finger inside his face because yeah. it's, it's really well that done. That painting there actually was a result of just months of putting it off because I had an idea and the longer I went just trying to, trying to work it, the more it just, Sometimes it would get muddy or I would just lose inspiration with it. And probably like six, seven months after I had even started it, I picked it back up and I just started going to town on it. Mm -hmm. And that's out of that your head. In, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's insane. <laughs> you have to go see these pieces. And if you miss a chance, you'll be able to see them at Zach and Scotty's um, restaurant downtown on Court Street between uh, 2nd Avenue and 3rd Avenue. Um, so that'll be nice. Uh, I don't, how much time do we have, Mike? Do we have? Six minutes. Okay, six minutes. Um, go ahead and, and tell our viewers about what we're looking at. That's. This is Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No. The original one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm a big horror movie person. I like slashers or the more s ghostly spiritual type ones. Oh, and yeah. I guess that's probably why I'm drawn more to the dark side of of things, really. And that's why I choose to, uh, to, <laughs> to draw stuff like this instead of happy flowers and trees and bases and whatnot. It's captivating. It's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, I'm really proud of your work and to hang it in the gallery and your second chance, you know, at the restaurant. Um, what would you like to tell our viewers about you, about your work, um, about, you know, what you hope to do in the near future? Um, do you have another body of work you're thinking about uh, or is it just going to come to you? like the other pieces have? I believe it's just going to come to me just like the other pieces did. I'm going to still stick to portraits and I've been drawing a lot of uh, pictures of animals here a lot lately mm -hmm. and I think maybe uh, the next time I have a show at your gallery which I think is in June maybe. Oh, yeah yeah that's right. I, I think it's in June. Um, I think I'm going to do a lot more animals and I'd like to get out and do some more like plein air painting uh -huh. and uh, have some landscape paintings and stuff like that but as far as me as an artist you know I just want people to realize um, you know I wasn't born you know like an artist prote protege or whatever I really worked for to where I'm at like as cliche as that sounds but I mean really anybody can do it, it just depends on how bad you want what it is that you want and it took me till about 26 27 years old before I realized that art's something that I always really wanted to do, and it's always been a part of my uh, my life. But I never made a career out of it, and I'm just to a different stage in my life now that this is what I want to do f for years to come. That's awesome, and we'll do everything we can to help you along the way. And pretty soon, you know, we'll be asking for your autograph. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure of it. It's. I'm really excited. To for your future and you got let us kind of be in on it in the yeah. beginning that's that's amazing thank you for for Welcome. allowing us to be a part of your growth and experience that's that's pretty amazing thank so, you so who is this is this big mac <laughs> no this was actually <laughs> just like a quick study that i did for a commission piece that i'm working on now i'm doing a uh, large uh 16 by 20 drawing of a bull and 
sometimes I like to get my hand warmed up, you know, just doing small drawings here and there. That and does this not is, look like a quick study to me. It that ended up turning into a, a couple hour project, well, really, that still, I ended up selling. I ended yeah. up selling that to a friend of mine, and they have that at their, their house. And that's amazing. They're wanting me to do maybe a commission piece for them, so we'll see yeah. what goes on. That's excellent. And this is the first really oh. color one that I've seen. Yeah, I just recently did this and actually sold it today. It's ah. a watercolor piece of uh, bluegill. Um, you guys actually have my, the bass, the largemouth bass that I just yes. did the other day, a watercolor. And what, what medium is? This is just watercolor. What, just and watercolor. I used a, a little bit of liquid acrylics. Okay. But it's mainly just watercolor. And I just felt like experimenting with some colors and not have to spend a whole lot of time with it as far as like using oil paints, I could just do something and be done in a couple oh, hours. Oh, I love your fish. I I'm love I'm thinking about those. doing more of those as well. Oh, please, please, absolutely. That'd be more water, watercolors, please. Okay. That'd be so great. Oh where, my gosh. Where do you find models? Uh, just Google. Google's my best okay. friend. <laughs> I, a lot of the time I use references, but I'll, I'll use them pretty loosely. Like, mm -hmm. as you can tell, that's not like a super realistic um, interpretation of a bluegill. I mean, the, the proportions as far as what you can tell is right, but as far as the details, I mean, I wanted to just play with the colors and be something bright, almost kind of like a David Hockney painting or something like that, yeah. where he's real bright and vivid with his colors. And why not? Artist's yeah. license, right. you know, totally. you can make it the way you want it. Right. It's a bluegill salmon, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want people to... Uh, to feel like every stroke or whatever that I make has to be like justified as to mm. like why I do it. That's why I tend to have a lot more fun with my, my yes. paints. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's what art's all about, you know, the, the creating with, with your emotions and what you want to do and your passion and that's just awesome. Thank you so much for, for being with us today, Blake. You're welcome, and thank you. And it wasn't so bad, was it? No, I didn't throw <laughs> up. <laughs> and so if, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, probably go to Instagram, and you can message people through Instagram. If that was uh, Blake Childers Art? Yes. Okay. On Facebook and Instagram. Blake Childers Art. And, okay. um, Mike, I didn't notice, but did you have, like, the little little captions underneath? Um, yeah, it didn't have Blake Childers Art, though. Okay. Okay, I'm just checking. Okay. Okay. So that's all the time we have for this week on uh, exposition, and thanks for watching. We did it.